Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest bread video. And in this one, I'll be making these delicious but very easy to make medium sized crusty burger buns. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I'll leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. And I'd like to thank the Patreon and PayPal supporters for their very kind help. I'll be doing the shout out and name splash a little later in the video. OK, let's get on with today's recipe. Right, I'll start the recipe by setting the yeast away. This is mainly to show that the yeast is alive and well. To the warm water I'll add the sugar and the yeast and give that a good mix until it's all dissolved. Now I'm using instant dried yeast but you can use active dried or even fresh if you prefer. If you are using fresh yeast you'll need 20 grams dissolved in exactly the same way as I'm doing here. OK, I'll let that sit in the sink of warm water until I know it's active and alive and well. If you don't see any activity after 10 minutes, your yeast is dead. Right, I'm using a stand mixer to knead my dough. If you haven't got one, you can knead it by hand. Check out my sandwich bread video on hand kneading techniques. Right, to the flour I've added the salt and softened butter. And if you are using a machine, obviously you'll need the door hook attachment. Time to check the yeast mixture. And as you can see, it's forming up nicely, indicating that it's good to go. OK, that's all of the ingredients in the bowl. I'll set the machine away and as soon as it all comes together, I'll knead it for 10 minutes. And if you're not using a machine, you'll still need to hand knead it for 10 minutes. OK, that's the 10 minutes up and the dough is now ready for the next stage. For the first proofing I'll be using this warmed up bowl, but first I'll add a little oil just to prevent the dough from sticking and drying out. OK, place your dough on the bench and give it a quick knead and form it into a ball. OK, once that's done, place the dough in the bowl and give it a quick coat of the oil as shown. This also prevents the dough from sticking as it rises up the sides of the bowl. Right, now cover the bowl and as my regular viewers will know, I cover my dough with a shower cap. And these are available in the website shop if you want one. It's just another way you can support the channel. Right, once that's done, you'll need to get it into a warm spot to proof for at least 45 minutes or until the dough has doubled in size. I like to use the oven with just the light bulb on. It works great. Right, for this recipe I'll be making 12 buns, so I'll need to prepare two baking trays. And the dimensions of the trays I'll be using are on screen. To make sure these buns don't stick, as I'll be using egg wash, I'll need to grease the trays. And to grease mine, I'll be using a little lard, but you can use oil, butter or shortening. OK, once the time's up, check that your dough has at least doubled in size. This time may vary depending on the temperature in your house. The ideal proofing temperature is 20 to 25 Celsius, that's 68 to 77 Fahrenheit. Mine's OK, so I'll turn it out onto the bench and give it a quick knead. And 
Next I'll weigh the dough. If your measurements were correct at the beginning, it should weigh around 1 kilogram, or 1000 grams, which is 35 ounces. Mine's close enough to 990 grams, so I'll divide it by 12, that makes each roll around 82 grams, or 3 ounces each. Once your dough is equally divided, you'll need to roll each piece into a ball. You can see how to master this rolling technique on my dinner roll video. Once you get the hang of it, you'll soon be two and two at a time. It's all down to practice. Right, get the dough balls onto the prepared baking trays. Leave plenty of room in between each roll, as you want to minimise the chance of these blending into each other too much. But it's not the end of the world if that happens. OK, cover your rolls with a dry, lightweight cloth. These small towels are the ideal weight for this job, and these are available on the website shop too. Right, once both trays are done, get them into the warm proofing spot, back in the oven in my case, and start by giving them 45 minutes, after which you can check to see if they're ready to move on to the next stage. And while they're also proofing, you can make up your egg wash. A little tip here, when making egg wash, add a tiny amount of milk before whisking. This will make the egg wash nice and runny and easy to apply. In our work kitchens, this used to be thin enough to put in a spray bottle when making large batches of pies, pastries, rolls, etc. Right, my 45 minutes are up and they're ready to go. I'll keep them covered up on the bench for a further 10 minutes while the oven heats up. Before preheating your oven, place a pan of hot water on the bottom of your oven. I like to sit mine on a wire rack for circulation. The steam created will make these rolls nice and crusty. You'll also need a spray bottle of water handy too. Now it's time to preheat your oven to 200 degrees Celsius, that's 390 Fahrenheit, or gas mark 6. Once your oven's up to temperature, you can prepare the rolls for baking. Leave this to the last minute. If they sit with egg wash on for a few minutes, they'll go wrinkly. <laughs> Just like me. These fantastic quality hog hair pastry brushes are on sale in the website shop too. Now carefully and gently brush on the egg wash. Don't worry if some runs down the sides and onto the tray. That makes a nice crispy bottom edge to the rolls. Sprinkle on a few sesame seeds and that's it. They're ready to go into the preheated oven. Be careful when opening the oven door, as there will be a build-up of steam from the water tray in the bottom, as you can see from my camera. Once they're in the oven, quickly give them a spray with water. This will make them extra crispy. Close the door and set your timer for 16 minutes. If you want them extra crusty, leave them for 19 to 20 minutes. And while those are baking, I hope you don't mind if I give my two recipe books a bit of a plug. The books have lots of our favourite easy to follow recipes from our work kitchens in them. Both books are available in the website shop along with lots of other equipment I use in the videos. And by popular demand the skeleton style oven gloves are now available too. Just click on the eye icon top right of your screen and that will take you directly to the website shop. Right. 
Right, once the time's up, carefully open the oven door to avoid the blast of steam. If the colour's right for you, get them out. If you want them a little bit darker, leave them in for a further three minutes. Once they're out, get them onto a wire rack and allow them to cool. And that's all there is to making these medium-sized crusty burger buns. OK, I'll cut one open and try it with a grilled burger. And as you can hear, they're nice and crusty and they smell amazing. Mine's still on the warm side, but that's OK. First, I'll add some horseradish sauce to both sides. Next goes on this quarter pounder, still sizzling. And finally, I'll top that off with a couple of slices of my homemade mature cheddar cheese. I have a couple of videos on the channel on how I made and opened this cheese, if you want to check those out. It's a very interesting process. I'll leave a couple of links in the description box below. And here we go. Two words, absolutely delicious. I really hope you try these. They're very easy and relatively quick to make and much, much better than store-bought burger buns. And they get the usual thumbs up. And as promised at the beginning, here's the latest list of my Patreon and PayPal donators. And they are David MacDonald, Wilco Newenkampf, Kenneth Hunter, Eric Donda, Agnes Sharp and Kate Bartolome. Thanks very much guys, I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. Well thank you again for watching, please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.